Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Nishing Diaries. Uh, I'm David van der Kamp, and in today's film, I'm going to show you step by step how to knit toe-up socks. And this is my latest published pattern, the Wild Orchid Socks. And these are toe-up, like I said, so they're worked from the toes up to the cuff. And since I posted about toy up socks in my knitting group on Knitters Gonna Knit on Facebook, which I co-founded with Eugenia Shah. Uh, a lot of people have, have shown interest in learning how to do um, toe up socks, uh, as well as how to manage fair isle knitting on socks, since people tend to get them a bit too tight. So in this film, I am uh, showcasing a step by step, all the way from the toes to the cuff, uh, and sharing all of my secrets as to how I get perfect toe up socks every time. So, if you haven't yet, please check out and purchase yourself the pattern since it is um, demonstrated according to this design. Um, so, please check out the pattern, and uh, it's available both on Ravelry and my uh, website. So, I'll put a link to the pattern down in the description box below. So, um, without further ado, let's get started on knitting some socks. Alright, so to begin our toe-up socks, we of course have to cast on from the toes, and today I'll demonstrate how to work Judy's magic cast on, uh, and get the entire toe bit set up. So let me just show you real quick here on the sock. So these are the toes. So we'll be starting uh, over on this edge and this custom is fabulously neat and it makes it sort of appear like there was there's no seam or anything there. So it just goes. So we'll cast on there and then we'll increase according to pattern until we get to the ferrile section. So uh, let me go uh, and show you how to how to get this started. All right, so to set up, um, get your double pointed needles. We'll need two, and we want to cast on twenty stitches in total, meaning ten stitches on each needle, and fetch your yarn. So now the yarn will go in between the two needles just like so, so that the tail is coming towards you and the working yarn is in the back. And then what you want to do is you want to bring the back yarn in front of the tail and then you want to place your thumb and in index finger and pinch to make a butterfly. So practically what you want to do is you want to make that twist, the first twist there. And now, index finger is going to come forwards, bring the yarn over the first needle and through the middle there and down. And the thumb yarn is going to go back, go in the middle and then down. And once again, index finger goes towards you over the needle and in between and the thumb goes under the needle in between and down so over the needle in between and down under the needle in between and down and you want to keep doing this until you have 10 stitches on each needle so you're practically twisting every time you make a stitch. Try not to do this too tightly because it'll be a bit tricky to, to knit later. Alright, so now we have cast on our 20 stitches. And we are going to proceed by working our increases, which are, let me show you, worked on every second row. 
So you knit one row of plain knitting and then on the second row you are going to work increases and there is going to be an increase on each edge of the 10 stitches. So let me show you how to work the first row which is going to be the plain knitted row and it is the trickiest to knit so please remain patient. We're going to turn our needles so that the tail is coming towards us and want to sort of get a grip on that tail so that it doesn't get in the way and it doesn't unravel that last stitch and our working yarn is in the back right there. So what we want to do is we want to go and knit the 10 stitches that are furthest away from us. So get a grip of that tail. You want to get your needle, go into the first stitch on the second needle there. You want to hold that nice and secure. Grab your working yarn and you want to knit that stitch and take it off. Then go into the second stitch, knit it, take it off. And at this point you can sort of shift that needle a bit so that you can get a nicer grip there so it doesn't, it doesn't, um, so it, it won't be as difficult. So we're going to knit to the to the end of that needle and feel free to find the position of your needle uh, that, that works for you comfortably. So let's knit those 10 stitches. And believe me, it gets easier after a few rows have been worked. Right now it's a bit tight and fiddly, but it's all right. So now we've knitted that very first row there and we can get that t uh, tail and give it a little tug so that it evens out that first stitch. Now we are going to set ourselves in, ourselves in a position and then we're going to rotate the needles push to the tips. So now the working yarn is um, on the stitch that is uh, on the needle closest to you. We're going to go into the stitch from the second needle and we're going to knit them all to the end. And this is what it looks like after finishing our first row of knitting. So you can see how nice and seamless that looks. Okay, so after working our first row, which was plain row, uh, on our second row, like I mentioned, we are going to work increases. And increases are worked on each edge of the needle. So there should be four increases. We started with 20 stitches in total and after row two we should end up with 24 stitches. So this is how I work them. You go into the first stitch and you want to knit front, oops, sorry, you want to knit that stitch, do not take it off the needle, go around and knit the same stitch through the back loop as well. So it's a knit front and back. And want to knit to the last stitch and work another increase there. So there should be two increased stitches on this needle. Almost. 
was there. So now we are at the last stitch. You want to go into that stitch, knit, knit the stitch, do not slip it off, go around and knit the same stitch through the back loop and take it off. And now we have increased two stitches on this needle. We are going to turn our work and repeat the same uh, steps on the second needle. So first stitch knit front and knit back of that stitch, take it off, then knit to the last stitch. Oops, I'm sorry about that. I hit the the tripod by accident. So I want to knit to the last stitch. There we are. Knit front and knit back. And there it is. Now we should have 24 stitches on our needles in total. Now for row 3, like all odd um, numbered rows, we are going to do a row of plain knitting, so just knit all stitches. And this is what you'll be repeating until you reach the number of stitches as instructed in the pattern. So knit one row plain and then on every other row you want to increase on each side of the needle. So on every increase round you should have four extra stitches. Alright, so keep doing that and I'll see you once I reach the fair isle bit so we can talk about that a bit. Alright, so I've finished the toe bit of the sock. I finished all of my increases and I've started the fair isle section. Um, so what I forgot to mention previously is that once you get a certain amount of stitches on your needles, feel free to transfer them to either multiple double pointed needles or magic loop, depending on um, your preference when knitting in the round. Uh, so in this uh, bit I want to show you how to achieve um, good tension and stretch in Fair Isle when working on socks, since many of you have mentioned in the comments under my post in the Knitters Gonna Knit group that uh, you don't like uh, working Fair Isle uh, on socks since it always ends up too tight. And of course there are ways to go around it uh, so that you get a nice and stretchy um, Fair Isle section so that it fits you nicely, since that's the point. So. Uh, the way you want to do this is, um, it's quite easy actually, so the whole point um, in achieving stretchiness in Fair Isle is to make sure that your stitches are spread out as you are knitting them. Since this is very small circumference, uh, unlike in a jumper, um, it can get rather tight in here. So, the way to do that uh, is you want to knit your stitches. Let me just get set up here and get to a float. So there are three dark stitches here and then there should be a, 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 a lighter stitch now. And this is where the tightness happens. So if you do this, as you uh, if you bunch them up, uh, all of the stitches, like you would, um, you, you would... Um, when you're knitting a jump or something. Um, that's when the tightness happens because that float in the back there is a bit tight and it has no space to move and that will dense up your fabric. So let me undo that one. So what you want to do is you want to stretch those stitches out like that and then you want to knit your lighter stitch. Then drop it, give it another stretch and continue knitting the three dark stitches. Wait, this one is split a bit. Like that. You drop it, pick up your light color, 
and before knitting it, give it a nice little stretch there. And then you want to knit it. Just like so. And that's how you can manipulate the stretch nicely. Now, I've made this sock pattern uh, purposely so that there aren't any long floats in the back. And this is massive help. But if you are knitting another pattern that has a, a motif or something that has long floats, uh, more than five stitches in between each colour, then uh, you really have to implement this technique so that uh, your floats have nice give. And let me show you what it looks like in the back. So you can see that each of the floats has a little loop there if you bunch it up together. So it has a loop and that loop is actually what gives it stretch so you can stretch it. If you make the float too tightly then there is no give and it will be tight and it won't fit. Now uh, another way of doing this is that you can flip your sock inside out like this and then you can knit your stitches. But the way uh, I, I don't really like doing it this way since I prefer looking at my stitches, um, my rows below. I like seeing my pattern so that in case there's a mistake, I can I can tell. But there's an that's an another met uh, method um, to give a try if you'd like. Um, and while I'm here, I would like to show you. Um, how I knit on only two working needles plus a third working needle, since um, some of you have asked me how I'm, uh, how I'm managing to do that. It is a bit fiddly, but I prefer doing it this way. And this is um, known as a Shetland way of knitting, since Shetland knitters, and knitters use long double-pointed needles and a Shetland belt, and they're not very keen on uh, circular needles. So they would only use two needles plus a third working one. And it's rather simple. So, when you're getting started at the beginning of your round there, you want to make sure that your needle is very close, like that close to the, to the back of that needle uh, and there's no space there because you don't want it too tight at the joint. And then you want to knit one stitch and then another little stitch there. And once you have two stitches in each colour, you're good to go. And at that point you can just ignore that third needle. And I like to get my fingers in there and then you just keep knitting and sort of ignoring that third needle like it doesn't exist. Just like so. And like I mentioned, just keep pulling on those stitches like that. And the only tricky part is getting to the end uh, of the needle. And let me get to the end so I can show you, uh, since it's a bit tricky to finish off around, but once you get used to it, it, it is rather uh, simple. And it's much quicker, let me tell you, because um, w why I don't like knitting socks is because I'm having to readjust all of the needles all the time, and that takes too much time, and I don't, I don't like wasting that much time on simply readjusting, and that's also a reason why I'm not a huge fan of um, magic loop method, since having to pull the needle um, on, and the cord and everything, every time you get to the half point, it really drives me mad. So this is quite a, a nice way to avoid that. So you see, once I'm to the end, I sort of get that ne uh, third needle in between my um, middle finger and index finger, and I just hold it there while I knit uh, the the last few stitches. And that's it. That's how you work. And as you can see here, it has a very nice stretch and it looks nice and neat. So I'm going to go and finish off the, the um, 
sole of my uh, foot, finish the whole thing until I get to the heel and then I'll come back and show you how I work my um, wrap and turn heel method. So uh, see you in just a bit. All right, so I've gone and knitted the entire body of the sock. Um, and in this bit, I want to show you how to do the heel of the sock, which is rather nice and easy to do. And this is uh, knitted using a wrap and turn short row uh, method, which is quite easy to master. Um, so follow me along and you'll get it in no time. It's super easy to do and it fits very nicely on one's foot. So let me show you how that's done. So we have our stitches here. Now, if you're using magic loop, you shall have like mine, you shall have uh, half of the stitches in front of you and half of the stitches in the back. And if you are using multiple double pointed needles, uh, you will have um, them in quarters or the, well, it depends on how many needles you have there. And we will be working across the first half of the stitches only, leaving the last, uh, the, the second half of the stitches uh, either on a stitch holder or, on, in my case, on the back needle. So now we will not work in the round, but instead work back and forth with the heel. And that's very easy to do. So. I'm just going to get started and we want to knit to the last stitch. Ooh, that was a fiddly one. All right, so I'm at the last stitch and this is where usually uh, you would begin doing the wrap and turn method. But I'm going to show you an extra step because sometimes when knitting this, you will get a little hole. Uh, and let me show you, I've left it on this sock on purpose. So you can get a little hole there at the joint on each side. And there's a way, a little extra step that can help eliminate that hole. So I'm going to show you. So we're going to knit the last stitch. And then we want to transfer that first stitch from the second needle onto our working needle and then we want to bring it onto our right hand needle you want to bring your yarn towards you like so and then you want to slip that stitch back onto your needle and bring the yarn back so what you've done is you've wrapped that stitch and now we're going to transfer that stitch back onto the second needle there, like so. And now you turn your work, readjust your needles, and we are going to purl back to the last stitch. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm at the last stitch. We're going to purl that one and not do the wrap and turn. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did with that stitch. We're going to take one stitch from the back needle onto our working needle. And then you want to slip it onto your right hand needle. Bring the yarn to, to the back of the needle. And then you want to slip that stitch back onto your left needle and back onto the back needle there. And then we bring the yarn forward and turn our work. So now what we've practically, uh, practically done is we've wrapped and turned the stitch, in, the first and last stitch of the second needle. And now we're going to ignore them all the way uh, until the end. Uh, and this will help to close off that gap that happens. And now we can start working our, um, short rows on the heel stitches only, meaning only on the half, uh, first half of the stitches. So let's knit to the very last stitch there. Just regular stocking stitch. 
All right, so I'm at the last stitch and we are now going to slip it onto our right needle, bring the yarn towards us in the front, take that stitch, slip it back onto our left hand needle and bring the yarn to the back. And what that has done, it has wrapped the stitch. Let me just focus that in so that you can see. So we have wrapped that stitch in there, like so. And now we're going to turn our work and we are going to purl to the last stitch. And then we're going to wrap that stitch as well. So we just grab our yarn, which is already set up to do the purl row and we are going to purl to the last stitch. All right, so I'm at the last purl stitch and we're going to wrap it. So slip it onto your right hand needle, like so. Bring the yarn to the back of your work. Then slip that stitch onto your left hand needle, like so. And bring your yarn to the front and then we're going to turn our work again and now what we want to do is we want to knit to the last stitch before the last stitch that we wrapped so in this case we're not going to uh, knit uh, to this stitch and wrap it again we're going to stitch to the one stitch before it so to the last two stitches and then we're going to wrap that stitch so let's just knit to that stitch and wrap it. All right, so I am at the one stitch before the last wrapped stitch and we're going to wrap that, that stitch now. So once again, we slip it onto the needle, bring the yarn forward, slip the stitch back onto our left hand needle and bring the yarn to the back of the work and then we turn. And now we purl back to the one stitch before last wrapped stitch. So not this one, but this one instead. So to the until there's two stitches left on, on our needle. So we're going to purl, purl back to there. So I'm in the stitch uh, before the last wrapped stitch. And we're going to wrap it, so slip onto our right hand needle, bring the yarn to the back, slip the stitch back onto the left needle and bring the yarn forward. And now we turn our work. And now we are just going to repeat this process. So we're going to knit to the last stitch before the last wrapped stitch. So we've wrapped the first and the second, so we want to wrap the third stitch. So we're going to knit to there and then wrap that stitch as well. And then when we turn our work, we're going to knit. So we've wrapped this one and this one, and we want to wrap this one. So we're going to knit to that point and then wrap that one as well. So let me show you that one more time. Okay, so here we are. We have the, the two wrapped stitches. We have to wrap this third one. So we bring it to the right hand needle, bring the yarn forward, slip it back onto the left needle and bring the yarn to the back. And then we turn our work. And of course we continue until we reach the third stitch there. Here we are to the, la to the one stitch before the last wrapped stitch. Let's wrap that stitch too. So yeah, I slip it onto the right needle, yarn goes to the back. We slip it back onto our left needle and bring the yarn to the front and we turn our work. So you want to repeat this process um, until you have half of the cast on stitches um, from the toes. So in my case, 
10 stitches. So I'm going to continue doing the wrap and turn until I have 10 stitches in the middle of this needle. Uh, of course, if you're following the pattern, it shall tell you exactly how many stitches to have in the center. So what we are doing here is we, we are shortening each row by one stitch on each side. So let's continue doing that and I'll be back when I have 10 stitches left in the middle. All right, so I finished the first half of the heel. So I've wrapped nine stitches uh, on each side and I'm left with the 10 unwrapped stitches in the middle. So now I want to show you how to work the second half of the heel. So first thing we want to do is knit across those 10 stitches or the number given in your pattern. So you want to knit across the unwrapped stitches until we get to the first wrapped stitch. Just bear with me. One more. Okay, so that's the last unwrapped stitch. And now the next stitch on the needle is a wrapped stitch. And what we want to do is we want to knit that stitch together with that wrap. So what I like to do is I transfer it onto my right needle and using my left needle, I pick up that wrap and place it onto the needle and then slip the stitch back onto the needle. So what we have now is the wrap and the stitch and we want to knit those two together. And this is a setup like that. And then the next wrapped stitch, we want to wrap again. So we will have a double wrap there. So slip it onto our right needle, bring the yarn forward, slip the stitch, oops, back onto the needle and bring the yarn to the back. And then we turn our work. And then we are going to purl until we get to the first wrapped stitch. That's getting a little caught there. Mm. Bear with me while I work across here. Let me count. Okay, so this is the first wrapped stitch. And like we did with um, on this side, we want to slip it onto our right needle. Let me focus on that. Using our left needle, we want to pick up that wrap, place it onto our left needle, and then slip that stitch back onto our needle so that we have a wrap and a stitch. And we want to purl those two together. And now we want to uh, wrap the next stitch again so that we have a double wrap there as well. So slip it, yarn to the back, slip it back onto the left needle and bring the yarn to the front. And then we turn our work. And this is our setup. And now, from now on, we will be knitting um, and uh, together um, the double wraps as well. So only double wrapped stitches. There will, uh, there will not be a single wrapped stitch anymore. So we want to knit until, our, um, until we come to the double wrapped stitch. Let's knit to there. And you can, of course, um, either count or use a stitch marker to mark um, where everything is. Uh, but you can also just look and see which stitch has a double wrap. For example, I've made it. So there's the stitch, this one, and it has two wraps to it. So we want to slip it and we want to uh, pick up both of those wraps. So here's one and here's two. So we want to pick up those two wraps onto our left needle, slip the stitch back onto our left needle 
and we want to knit all of them together. So two wraps and a stitch. Knit them together like so. And once again we want to prepare our next stitch by wrapping it one more time so that we have a double wrap. Slip it, bring the yarn towards you, slip it back onto the needle, bring the yarn to the back and then we turn our work. Oops, I'm losing that one. And we want to now purl across until we get to our first double wrapped stitch. All right, so this is our double wrapped stitch. There's the two wraps. We want to pick both of them up onto the left needle and slip the stitch back on the left needle as well. And then we want to purl all of that together. So the two wraps and the stitch. And we purl them together. And then we prepare our next stitch by wrapping it one more time. And we turn our work. And you can see the beginning uh, of heel forming there because we are turning and restoring the number of stitches that we originally started with. So you want to keep repeating that uh, until you come uh, and have all of the stitches um, that you uh, started with for the heel. And then I'm going to show you what to do with those um, stitches we wrapped previously and then uh, show you how to do the rest. So continue doing that. So you knit to the last, uh, to, to the first double wrapped stitch. You pick up the wraps and the stitch, knit them together and then wrap the next stitch so that it has two wraps. So you do the same thing on the purl side, except that you do, um, you purl them together instead of knit them together. So keep doing that and I'll see you in just a bit. So uh, I've done the rest of the heel um, and the first and the last stitch of the heel are both double wrap now so uh, we need to knit the last and the first stitch uh, with the wraps now and i'm going to knit to that last stitch and show you what to do with the stitch that we wrapped uh, from the second needle so please do stick with me while i get to the end of this row Of course, there's other ways to do heels, but this is just my preferred method um, for the toe-up socks. Of course, um, it's a little bit different when knitting them top down, but I highly suggest you give this method a try. It's definitely very satisfying and superbly easy to do. So, almost there. All right, so I'm at that very last stitch, which has its wraps. We want to pick up those two wraps and they're a bit tricky to see here. Let me zoom, uh, show in focus. So I want to pick those two sti uh, wraps and place them on the needle and we want to knit it all together like we did previously. And now we want to transfer that stitch the, from the second needle, we want to put it onto our left hand needle and we want to give it another wrap so that it matches. So we have it there, we want to slip it 
and give it another wrap yarn to the back now and we can transfer it back onto the second needle and ignore it for now so we turn our work and we want to purl to the very last stitch and then do the same knit the last stitch with the two wraps move that one stitch to the left needle wrap it and then turn so let me do that and show you Okay, so I'm at that last stitch, we slip it, we pick up the two wraps, put them on the needle with the stitch and we purl them together, like so. And now we want to transfer that one stitch from the second needle, slip it to the right needle and wrap it as well, so that it has like all others, two wraps and then put it back onto our needle. And that's it, the heel is complete. As you can see, so th there's our toes, this is our heel and now what we want to do is we just want to continue knitting straight forward onto this bit. So follow your pattern instructions. Um, knit this bit and knit the ribbing and I'll later come back to show you how I do the super stretchy bind off on the on the ribbing but before I go I want to show you what to do with the two stitches that are now wrapped uh, onto the second needle so because we are following the pattern now we are going to treat this as uh, as we did here so we are following the pattern and knitting. Uh, so let me just get my second color because I broke it off. Uh, although you don't you don't have to break the yarn off when when doing the heel. I just did it. Uh, and the pattern says to go and do row number one. So let me do that. I'm going to join this yarn here. Okay, so let me finish the ferrile section across the heel and I'll come back and show you when I get to that wrapped stitch on the next needle. Okay, so I've done the pattern across the half stitches and the first stitch on the next needle is that double wrapped stitch. So, uh, following the pattern, that should be the pale rose color. And what we want to do is we want to slip it and we want to pick up those two wraps like we did previously but it is a bit tight place it back onto the needle you want to go into all three and you want to knit them according to pattern with the color that is instructed so in my case that's a pale rose and you want to knit them together like so and then you just continue knitting in the pattern until you get to the last stitch which is also double wrapped stitch and then you want to do the same so you want to pick up those uh, two wraps and according to pattern knit them together with the color so in my case i should finish with the darker color so i'll be knitting um, knitting them together with my dark color and i'm just gonna get to there and then show you that as well okay, so i'm at the back uh, the last stitch you want to slip it 
and you want to pick up the two rubs there place it back onto the needle and like I mentioned in my case these two should be knitted with my dark color so I'm just going to knit all of them together like that with my dark color and that's it so what you've done is you have closed up that gap that usually appears um, when working wrap and turn of course it's a bit hard to show now because um, it's a bit tight there there's nothing up but um, it should be nicely closed and if not if you've done something wrong or simply choose not to uh, do the extra step then you can just use the the ends to to weave in the the gap or even leave it it won't it won't be that visible and it won't be uh, a problem when wearing a sock so um, like I said you want to continue knitting onto the the top part of the fair isle uh, and then do the ribbing uh, just follow the pattern and I shall see you once I've done all of this and uh, I can show you how to do the nicely stretchy bind of there all right so I've finished the the body of the sock and the top bit of the fair isle and I've gone and knitted my ribbing so now I just want to show you quickly how I finish this off um, using a very nice stretchy bind off method for the 2x2 ribbing. Uh, of course uh, you can use it for any type of um, ribbing whether it be one by one or um, whatever really and you see it gives you a very nice stretchy uh, finish to your cuff of the sock so that it fits nice and snug around your um, around your leg so let me just show you how that's worked and it's very very simple um, and yet very effective so uh, in my case my ribbing starts with one by one uh, with uh, I'm sorry with uh, two knit stitches so we are going to knit the first stitch leave it onto the needle we're going to go and knit the second stitch, like so. And then we shall insert our left hand needle into the front legs of those two stitches, like so. And then we want to knit them together and take them off. Then we have two purl stitches, so we bring our yarn forward we purl the next stitch. We insert our left needle into the back loops of those two stitches on our right needle and we purl them together like so. Next stitch is also a purl so we purl that stitch. We have two on our right hand needle. We insert our left needle into the back legs of those stitches and we pull them together like so then we have two knit stitches so we bring our yarn to the back of our work we knit one and now we insert our left hand needle into the front legs of those two stitches and we knit them together another knit stitch into the front legs of those two stitches and we knit them together. And this is what you repeat all the way around. So when there's a purl stitch, you purl, purl one, go into the back legs of those two stitches, like so, and you purl them together. And when there's a knit stitch, you go into the front legs. So that's also a purl stitch, like that. Bring the yarn to the back, knit one, go into the front legs of those two stitches and knit them together. Another knit stitch, into the front legs, knit them together. 
and that's your stretchy uh, bind off there. So you just continue and you finish off all of the stitches around the cuff and you shall be left with the uh, lovely, uh, neat, very stretchy cuff for your socks. And that's about it. That brings us to an end of this uh, tutorial slash masterclass on the toe-up socks. If you've enjoyed it, uh, please consider subscribing uh, and uh, hitting a like button on this video, um, since I really wanted to to share all the details with you and I put a lot of work into filming it. So um, a like and a subscribe um, button would be most appreciated. So yeah, I hope you go on and knit these lovely socks um, and uh, implement the techniques that I shared when knitting other toe-up socks. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you very much for uh, sticking with me for this long uh, so that you can see how I've done these socks. Um, right, so I shall say bye-bye now uh, and I'll see you all uh, in my next episode of my podcast.